Hello, this is Dick Sturgeon. I'm going to be your host today for uh, Focus on the Community. Uh, today we have a visitor with us, uh, uh, Pastor Paul Spidell from West Lawn Presbyterian Church. And welcome to the program, Paul. Thank you. Now, uh, I also have to tell you that uh, I'm also a member of the West Lawn Presbyterian Church and uh, I'll be participating a little bit in, in some of the information too. Uh, where is West Lawn Presbyterian Church at? We're located at 2521 West 4th Street. It's on the for corner of West 4th and Castleman. All right. And uh, do you have, uh, how long have you been there, Paul? I've been there since the 1st of June. So about eight months, six months? Yep. All right. And the the history of uh, West Lawn, uh, the, the the present building, uh, how how old is it? When was it built? It was built in 1953. It was completed in '53 and began services there. So. And do you? Uh, how did the West Lawn Presbyterian Church come about? If you know, it was actually the merging of three West Side congregations. Um, they settled on another location and then moved to the West Fourth location. Um, like I said, in, in 53, so. And uh, something that I, I learned that uh, their, their previous building uh, in f uh, was uh, moved from downtown Sioux City uh, out to the west side and up, up that real steep hill on Leonard. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was their home for quite a while. It uh, is about 100 uh, block of South Leonard. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you're, you're a CLP, and can you explain a little bit what that means? Sure. Uh, CLP is the Commission Lay Pastor. Um, it's a program with the Presbytery of Prospect Hill, of which West Lawn is a uh, congregation of, and the uh, Presbytery of North Central Iowa. And what it's designed for is, are people that have the gifts and talents that gear themselves towards ministry that don't necessarily have the educational background, for instance, uh, to become ordained in our faith, I need to have my Master's of Divinity, and to do that, I have to have a bachelor's degree, of which I don't have yet. And it's a two-year program that meets uh, one weekend a month, and it allows you to take basically a crash course in seminary. Um, at the end of that, you're considered commissionable and uh, would ordinarily serve a church that was either looking for an associate pastor or uh, considering new ways of doing ministry, as Westlawn was when I came there. So. Okay. In you came you came to our church with uh, with some experience though you had been uh, uh, servicing another church at yes. the time. Yes, I served uh, Union Township in rural Lamar's for a little over two years. So, and I understand you you have uh, some plans to continue your education, which would include uh, 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 getting your uh, degree in yes. divinity. Yes, my my goal is to uh, receive my Master's of Divinity and be the installed pastor at West Lawn Presbyterian in the future. One of the things that, uh, that you've brought to our congregation and to our church is a, is a belief that we should keep uh, the church building uh, busy. Yes. And can you explain that? Um, we're called as Christians to be the body of Christ in the world, not the body of Christ within those four walls. And uh, in order for us to survive and thrive as a congregation, we need to first discern what uh, the, the community is in which we're to serve, and then secondly, what that community's need is. Um, certainly, you know, being from the west side, there's several needs that we have begun to and continue to meet. So, And, and as you say, the community is, is more than just uh, the west side. Right. Uh, uh, we've seen uh, Dakota Dunes grow, mm -hmm. and uh, we've seen uh, 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 Riverside change, uh, so the community the community covers quite a wide area. Well, we live in a world where uh, ge geography is no longer an issue as far as bounds of a community, so. Okay. Now, uh, we have meeting in the building uh, a uh, AA group mm -hmm. and also uh, uh, some Girl Scouts and 4-H, yes. uh, I understand. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, since you've come uh, to our church, uh, you've started uh, some programs and held some programs to uh, be able to keep uh, uh, keep the building in use and, and to uh, open it up to the community. I'd like to talk about a few of those. Uh, uh, you held a, a healing service mm -hmm. uh, in uh, 
Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, the healing service uh, was kind of designed uh, people that had a specific healing need, whether it be in mind, body, or spirit. Um, certainly, as a pastor and as you know, faithful members of the church, we are uh, enabled to have the power of Christ in us. Ultimately, it's God that does the healing, um, and it was just a way for myself to connect with the community and uh, you know let them know that we're more than just Sunday mornings. And the Bible has uh, gives authority for that. I believe mm -hmm. that it's uh, uh, laying on hands sure. by the uh, by the elders. By I, the I believe it is, mm -hmm. it, and it's not something like uh, we see on a lot of the TV programs where uh, there's a bolt of lightning or a person yeah. falls over. But this is through faith, sure. as I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, we also attempted to have a a military uh, uh, service uh, uh, where we're going to have a uh, uh, prayer meeting for those who were in the service mm -hmm. and those who had uh, been in the service. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, our uh, military service actually correlated with the uh, bombing of Pearl Harbor. And um, it was just a way for us to remember that we are still a nation at war and that ultimately uh, it is God that has us under his wing and to let the community know that we were there for them and we could empathize with what they were going through. We had a military honor guard, is mm -hmm. that right? And an honor guard and also a soloist, uh, Mary Brown, that uh, sang some beautiful patriotic selections. And uh, our message there was all about hope. So. And as a, you, you plan to do that again, uh, if, uh, as I understand yes. it, next mm -hmm. year. All right. yep. We're presently, uh, on Wednesday night, we have what is called Open Chapel. Uh, and uh, uh, can you explain what that is? Sure, Open Chapel is a time, uh, starting now with Lent, the Lenten series, it's going to be a time from 7.30 to approximately 9 o'clock where people can just come in and sit and quietly meditate and get away from the hustle and bustle and chaos of this world and actually commune with the living God, actually uh, have that time to refresh and recharge. And so. There's no, during Open Chapel, there's there's no service, is that right? There hasn't been. There will be for the Lenten series. But that'll be... That'll be from 7 to 7.30. Right. And mm -hmm. then from 7.30 on, uh, it will uh, simply be the, the, the sanctuary will be open, open for anybody yeah. that wishes to come sure. in. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can just come and go as they wish. Sure, and I would add that if they had specific prayers that they'd like somebody to uh, pray with them, we have prayer stewards available. And we also have prayer request cards that they can fill out where either myself or our prayer team or our prayer, uh, our congregation could pray for them also. And that, uh, during the open chapel, there, uh, there's no names taken. Uh, a person can come in, set, right. uh, as long as they want, and then just get up and leave. Uh, sure. uh, so we plan to do that for a, a period of time, as mm -hmm. I understand it. Is that correct? Yes, I'd like to see it continue indefinitely, yes. And I might tell you that that, that idea came from Massachusetts, and we lived out there. Uh, they've been doing it for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's nights that we sit there and nobody comes, sure. but there's nights we sit there and we have several that come in. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a service we're going to keep doing. Uh, uh, the, you're having an adult class right now that I think is interesting. We're into it now, a couple mm -hmm. of Sundays, yeah. but I think that it's quite interesting. It, it, it's about uh, the world religions. You, would you explain that a little bit? Sure. Uh, where this came about is my wife actually got a book called... Uh, World Religions, and it's by a, a pastor named Am Adam Hamilton. He's actually a Methodist minister. And uh, it, it basically discusses how Christianity relates to five other religions. Buddhism, Buddhism Hindu. Hinduism, Islam, Judaism, right. and then Christianity being the fifth. And uh, we, so far, we're getting into the second ch chapter mm -hmm. at our next one. And, and I can tell you that it's really interesting. You know, I've learned an awful lot that that shame on me, I should have known before, <laughs> but it is really interesting. That starts at 9 o'clock, I understand, yep. on Sunday morning, and anybody's welcome to attend sure. that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, we have books now, but we can get more books if we need sure, them. Sure, it's not a problem. Uh, <clears throat> and that's held in the chapel uh, right off the sanctuary, as I understand right. it. All right. Well, our church is noted for doing things as Christ has taught us to do for other people. Uh, our missions, our mission giving is uh, is uh, second to none. 
uh, we do a lot of things to help other people out. Mm -hmm. A couple things I want to talk about. Uh, we have a sewing group uh, that meets once a month at our church. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about that. Sewing group meets, I believe it's the second Thursday of the month. Um, and what they do is they sew actually like uh, breast pillows for cancer victims. Um, no. I think that's what the sewing, yes. I think that's what their focus is now. And that's what they're known for. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got, a, and they've got awards for that. It's a, it's a marvelous little thing. It, it doesn't look like much, mm -hmm. but uh, they have people save nylons for them yep. or, uh, or pantyhose for them. And that's for uh, women who have had uh, the uh, uh, radical uh, 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 breast removal done. It, it, it gives them something to put uh, uh, under their arm to relieve the pain and mm -hmm. give them some comfort. And I can tell you that I've known people that have had that surgery and, and uh, the volunteers uh, uh, from the hospital have walked in carrying one of those pillows. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they, really, uh, they really help out quite a bit. Now, anybody, anybody is welcome to come and be part of, of that sewing group, as I understand yes. it. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've, they've got enough, you cut nylons and you, mm -hmm. and you, stuff, uh, you stuff these little pillows. And, and, and it's I, not just the women of the and, church that do it. There's also men there's, that go. So. And, and also they have, uh, they have a pretty good feed, too, I understand. Mm -hmm. Now... <clears throat> the quilting group uh, uh, meets at our church also, and uh, tell us about that. The quilters meet, I think, it's every week, and they, uh, throughout the year, make these quilts and then donate them to various organizations. Uh, they make lap quilts for some of our shut-ins, they make baby quilts, they make full-size, pretty much any size quilt you would not want. And so then they give them away to various organizations. I think 13 organizations last Christmas received quilts from our group. So. And anybody, anybody in the neighborhood or anybody in the community that, uh, that is a quilter and looking for something to do, they're welcome to come over mm -hmm. and, and join that. And if people have any questions, they can surely give us uh, a call there at the sure, church, or, the church or, or stop in. Mm -hmm. One final thing, we're running out of time here, is that we have a sign out front. Uh, and I'd like to uh, make people aware that if, if you have any messages you'd like to see on that sign, to drop them off at the church or to uh, uh, mail them over. Uh, again, we're, we're getting close on the end of time. I want to thank you for coming out. Uh, uh, you, you've been a joy to have at our church and, and we're looking forward to uh, a, a long relationship where uh, we can build, uh, build our service to the community. Right. And uh, this is a uh, focus on the community uh, sponsored by Siouxland Media, uh, Siouxland Community Media and Morningside College and we thank you for viewing.